Welcome, it's cold out here today. I'm out here in the Washington Cascades with my F-150 trimmer. This is the 2021 model. I'm gonna put up somewhere right now the specs, like the window sticker, and exactly how this one is optioned. So if you hear me mention some things, it might be specific to the way this truck was optioned and not necessarily uh, true for all tremors or all F-150s. So overall, I like the truck. I've owned it for about two months. Uh, we have almost 4,000 miles on it. We drove it from Seattle to LA and back. Uh, I've driven in snow, rain, ice, like the whole, whole nine yards. So I have a pretty good idea of how it handles in uh, different conditions. And um, this is gonna be more of a video about the random things I like and don't like uh, as an owner. Uh, this isn't a full comprehensive review of the truck. Uh, there's better videos for that. This is more real life. And a lot, some things I might mention might be kind of minor and you might be wondering why I'm talking about it. But I hope I cover some things that you're not seeing in those kind of professional reviews and those um, very scripted type of things. So this is gonna be more raw me just talking about it. Before you comment about how this is minor and I'm covering random things, or I'm not talking about raw specs of the truck, uh, you're better off reading the technical spec uh, specifications on the Ford website if you want that type of video. So I'm gonna get into the things I really like about this truck, the things I don't like, and uh, we'll start with the things I do like. So we'll get into that now. If you hear background noise, we are right next to a stream, but it is a very scenic area out here. So the first good thing I think about this truck or the thing kind of sticks out to me is uh, this truck really feels kind of like the more the everyday man's Raptor so I'm not gonna lie to myself if I could afford a Raptor and I can make that work with my budget I probably would have went with the Raptor but um, and a lot of people say like oh the Raptor's only I don't know ten thousand dollars more or the Raptor starts about 65 when this starts around 50 uh, the thing is, especially with this market, you're not getting a Raptor for $65,000. At least most people are not. This one you can get at MSRP, unlike a Raptor, which is usually kind of in the market we have here in Washington State, especially on the West Coast or big, bigger cities. Uh, Raptors are going for about ten dollars to $20,000 over sticker. So you're really not getting into a Raptor um, under $85,000, unless you kind of uh, have a dealer you work with or have kind of have hookups or those type of things. Uh, but you can get a Tremor um, pretty close to MSRP or at MSRP depending on where you're at and they're a lot easier to find and So that makes it overall just a lot more affordable uh, What's great about it is you get a lot of the benefits of the Raptor So you can option this with the Raptor's uh, transfer case. You can option this with the front uh, Torsin differential uh, You get the cool little style wings you have here on the hood kind of supports the Raptor You get the running boards from the Raptor you get the cool kind of orange styling. You get these little toe hooks in the front. Uh, you get a lot of the benefits of the Raptor, but without the big price tag. So I would I would like a Raptor, but this is a pretty nice truck. And if we're being real with ourselves, many people are not really pushing their truck to that level where they need that type of capability that comes with the Raptor. So for most people, this is gonna be uh, great. Uh, one thing I do want to point out quickly, I've been thinking a lot, I've been looking at reviews for the uh, the new Tundra TRD Pro, and I think it's crazy that Toyota built an off-road oriented truck that doesn't have front tow hooks. That should be the default option that comes with any truck, they should have front tow hooks, and especially if you're saying this truck is an off-road thing, you need the front tow hooks. So I've already used those a couple times, I towed some people out a couple weeks ago when we are having uh, snow and ice on our hill. Uh, but yeah, it's a whole thing I've been thinking about. It's kind of ridiculous that there's truck companies building off-road trucks without front tow hooks. Uh, another thing that's kind of uh, nice about this compared to the Raptor is you do get better gas mileage. It's not a whole lot better. Uh, I've done a video kind of covering the whole MPG and kind of what gas mileage you can expect. But you are getting around 18 or 20 on the highway and um, not the best, but it's good for a truck that's on 33s and is uh, this size. Before we move on from the styling and talk about how it compares to the Raptor, unlike the regular F-150s, you do get the nice kind of rear exiting exhaust. So you get these dual exhausts unlike a lot of the regular F-150s where it exits up the side. And I do really like the look of this, uh, this bumper with the exhaust coming out the back compared to the normal F-150. Since I'm in the back of the truck, I'll move on to the next thing I like, which is the factory lighting. So this does have a lighting option. Uh, I don't think it comes with all these external lights uh, standard but check my options like I, I mentioned at the beginning of the video um, when I bought the truck I was expecting I would do some type of lighting and set up some uh, aftermarket lighting but I found that I don't need that uh, here in the Northwest it's pretty dark and uh, 
especially during the winter any external lights you have are really handy and during the summer i expect to do some camping and it's nice having those lights to be able to light up the campsite when you're kind of looking around for things at night uh, but the bed lighting it comes with there's a button right here it has two lights on both sides and that's really handy especially with the cover because it's very dark under this uh, dime bag cover so i really like that um, let me show you the other lights and how that works so you have a light up here above the back of the cab you also have lights right here originally i was thinking i was going to do ditch lights and i was going to hook those up to the auxiliary switches that are up here you can probably see those but so far i haven't needed that so let me turn up turn on the infotainment system and i'll show you how these lights uh, can be configured so yeah here's the infotainment system before i get into the lights it is pretty cool you can have the bed cameras and different cameras here on the side of the infotainment system while you have the main thing over here and this has been handy when i'm driving with a lot of stuff in the bed so i could just keep an eye on it while i'm driving but anyways so the zone lighting you can specify which lights you want the front the sides are the back so let me turn on the side one for example and we'll go out here it's hard to see because it is daylight but these are pretty pretty bright oh sorry it's beeping because of the key uh, but they are pretty bright and they've been bright enough where uh, if we're driving and I want to light up say the side of the truck so I can see what's on the side of the road I can do that and I found that I probably won't need to do type, any type of like aftermarket lighting I'm pretty happy with uh, the factory setup so I'm not sure now what I'm going to do with these auxiliary switches uh, they do look cool but if anybody else has ideas besides lighting uh, I was thinking maybe onboard air but like i mentioned in my previous videos i don't really like the idea of having the air kind of hard mounted to the truck but we'll see i'll think of something i've been pretty happy with these general grabbers that came with the truck uh i was thinking i might switch these out when i first bought the truck but just given the performance i've had with them so far with the ice the snow and the different conditions we've been in i haven't found these to be lacking at all uh they also have pretty low uh, road noise so you don't hear a ton of noise from these when you're driving down the highway so that's nice. So I'm gonna keep these for a while. I'll probably do an update in a year once I use them in more seasons and mud and stuff and just not during the winter like I've been using them. But overall, I don't see why I would upgrade these. Uh, there's probably better options, but it's not worth the, minor improvements aren't worth the, that cost for me right now. One of the reasons I went with the Ranger uh, previously instead of a F-150 is I do spend some time in Seattle. Uh, we live right outside of Seattle and the streets are pretty narrow. It's not a, a city that's very friendly for full-size trucks. Um, and I would suggest if you're spending a lot of time in a city like Seattle, a uh, full-size truck probably isn't the best option. I could squeeze in pretty much anywhere with my Ranger. Uh, that has not been the case with uh, this F-150. However, having said that, the 360 camera system, so there's cameras here in the front, all around the truck, and it gives you kind of a bird's eye view of the truck. You can also zoom in, so you can select this camera specifically, zoom in, see exactly how close you are to curbs, uh, cars, other things like that, which is really cool. So it, it's kind of crazy you can zoom into these individual cameras and things like that. And that has made owning a full-size truck here in Seattle where things are pretty cramped, uh, not too bad. So I've been able to get around fine. It still is kind of a pain to park this sometimes, uh, but these cameras definitely uh, help a lot with that. So with the way this truck is optioned, it did come with, uh, I forgot what it's called, but it's the cruise system where it'll keep distance between the car in front of you. So you can set the cruise at 70, but it'll slow down and it'll speed up so you don't rear end anybody. And it also, with that system, it'll keep you uh, centered in the lane. So it's not just lane keep, so it's a little bit confusing. Ford has this thing called lane keep, which is pretty much like the wheel will vibrate and it'll kind of alert you when you're kind of drifting out of your lane and give you a little nudge. And then there's lane centering, which this has, and that will actually kind of steer for you. It's almost like a self-driving thing, assuming you're on a highway with very well-defined lines. And that system has been great. Like I mentioned, we drive, we do cross-country road trips pretty often, and we're driving sometimes about five, 600 miles a day, sometimes more than that. And having the truck kind of keep you in the lane and do all the cruise control management and stuff like that, it's pretty nice. Uh, I don't know if it's a total necessity, but I think going forward, like before I bought this truck, I didn't think I needed it. But going forward, I probably will option any future vehicles with that type of lane keep system and dynamic uh, cruise control thing. So that's been really nice. One of the primary reasons I went with the F-150 or the, uh, one of the reasons I wanted to move out of my Ranger was I really wanted a load flat floor. So the Ranger and a lot of other trucks, when you pick up the seats, you still have kind of a big hump right here. And 
lifting up the seats doesn't really give you that nice loading area. And something I wanted for our dog, because on those long trips, it is a little cramped for a dog. She's a Rottweiler. Um, she's not gigantic, but she was on the larger side. So I wanted her to have space, especially when she's in the car for like 12 hours a day for multiple days. Uh, I wanted her, her, her to have some more space to kind of stretch, stand up, walk around a little bit. So this has been great. We can throw our bed back here. Uh, if you've seen my previous videos, you've seen videos of her just laying back there and chilling. So that was a big deal for me. And this also lets me load in like camera gear and electronics and other things. Um, I can load a full size like plastic tub back here and keep our stuff dry and warm. So that's been great. It's also, so just give you an idea how big this is. I'm five, about five seven, five eight. And this is big enough where you could, if you're doing overlanding type of stuff, you can get in here and kind of just lay on the floor and use this as like a, kind of a sleeping area. So I'll crawl back here and show you that. So I mean, it's not the biggest area. You are a little bit, gonna be a little crunched up, but if you want need to make it do, you can sleep back here pretty comfortably, especially if you put like a sleeping mat, a pillow, and maybe a sleep bag or something. But yeah, it's a pretty good size. Definitely, definitely doable. Before we move on from the interior, like I mentioned before, the road noise is pretty low. I found the inside of the truck to be pretty quiet. Uh, I'm happy with it. I think it was a little bit quieter than my Ranger, and it's quieter than like my WRX before this was extremely loud, and I had a couple other economy cars before that, and those were all really, really loud. So this is nice. You have a conversation. You can have music at a reasonable level, and um, it's really nice that your ears are not kind of getting blown out on those really long drives. So pretty happy with the road, road noise. Uh, it's another pro, I guess, over the Raptor because I've heard the Raptors can be kind of loud. And last little thing to call out before we move on, I really do like the gas tank in this. This came with a 36 gallon gas tank. It's the extended gas tank. And we were able to get over 600 miles on a single tank of gas. So that's crazy and that's really awesome when you're on those long road trips. Uh, I'm usually only filling this up maybe about once a month now. So it is expensive when you're filling it up because it's a lot of gas, but you're not going to the gas station as much and I hate getting gas. So uh, that's a major pro for me and that's something I was really looking for uh, when I moved on from my Ranger. Especially since the range in the Ranger, uh, range in the Ranger, was only about 350 miles. So this is a big improvement. So some of the annoyances, I'm gonna start with this one since it was the one that kind of surprised me the most. Uh, I think I made a bad assumption assuming that F-150 at this cost, at over $50,000 would come with folding mirrors standard. It didn't, so especially like I mentioned, parking in tight places like Seattle, uh, I have to get out of the truck, fold these in and unfold them manually. Uh, my Ranger, which was about $38,000 if I remember correctly, under 40 for sure, uh, had power folding mirrors. So I was a bit shocked when this one didn't, but it is what it is. Another thing is the truck does have these pretty cool little power points, the 12 volt and the 120 volt right here, like the normal house style plug. The thing that's annoying is I would have really liked having this 12 volt inside the, um, uh, the armrest so there's there are usbs in there but i really like having the 12 volt um somewhere hidden so that i can have something plugged in all the time in this type of cigarette type lighter um with its current location it, it is convenient but i like using this constantly and i'm not going to be have some adapter here sitting here all the time just because it, it looks kind of ugly where it's at so i would have liked another 12 volt in the um in the armrest so back in the back of the truck again uh i really hate the tie downs they have here. Um, I know you can option a better tie down system, but this only came with four tie downs. There's one in each corner. Uh, they're kind of poorly placed. They're not very usable. And even my Ranger, which didn't have any option tie down thing, uh, it had six tie down points. So I had one here, one in the middle and one in the back. This only has the front and back. So even just having one more in the middle would have been nice. I don't know why Ford didn't spend the couple extra pennies on that, but this, this sucks. So I'm going to be doing something about that. Um, I really just need one more tie down in the middle and that'd be enough for me. Um, I don't need anything fancy, but I'm gonna be doing something about that just by, by my own uh, tie downs for that. Here in the cab, uh, this only has one stock and this is both used for the blinkers and the windshield wipers and everything else. I miss having the, the separate one for the windshield wipers. I'm the type of person that likes to do it manually and kind of like uh, trigger that whenever I need to clear the windshield. And this only has like the rotating thing where you can set the speed or you can set an automatic. It's not a real problem because you really don't need to be manually doing it. This works fine. It's just something, something that I've had in every other vehicle and I miss it in this one. 
So I don't have very many problems with this truck. I'm pretty happy with it. All the little minor problems and things I mentioned are all not a big deal and not a deal breaker for me. I'm still happy with this purchase. Um, the bigger issues I have have to do more with the full size truck in general, not this specifically. Um, it is a little bit of pain to deal with in Seattle, uh, the parking situation and stuff like that, but there's no way I can fault this truck for the issues of a full size truck in general. And I knew what I was getting into and even with that, I still really enjoy it and this, is, uh, this, is a bit, this has been great and I will do it again. So I'll probably do another video in a year once we take it through all the seasons and through all our normal activities like camping, off-roading, overlanding, the whole nine yards. So I'll do more videos on that later on. I'll have my normal videos as the season goes on as I do more things with this. Uh, but it's been great so far and I think this is probably the best trim uh, option the F-150 you can buy uh, besides of course like maybe a Raptor or something like that uh, but that's not practical and not really doable for most people so I think in terms of the, the looks the capability and stuff like that this is kind of the, the way to go especially since this can tow um, better than the Raptor and a couple other um, trucks in the segment but that's pretty much it if you have questions comments anything like that make sure to uh, comment below I'll answer I like talking to everybody and uh, I'll see you out there.